Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Today, I have some subscriber submitted experiences. I took the day yesterday, um, being that my dad is back in upstate New York instead of in Albany. Um, I took the day to just really sit in my office down here um, go through all of the subscriber submitted emails. And to be honest with you, there was over 192 emails from subscribers. Um, what I do is <clears throat> when I see it's a subscriber, I'll click star archive it into the, um, starred box. And then I used to probably like a day or two go back and go through it. So I'd only have like four or five uh, every couple of days. Being that my dad has been in the hospital since November 20th, I had 192. <laughs> um, dating back four days before his surgery. So uh, I really, I've got a list of people that want to do interviews and I've got a pile of experiences to share with you. A um, lot of interesting, a lot of interesting things. Uh, a lot of people just wanted to say hi and wish uh, my family well. But today I've got a uh, really terrifying subscriber submitted experience for you all. Before we get into that, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, volume one through three, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click the like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. And folks, please share this video and leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yeah, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's upload, shall we? All right, guys. So today's subscriber submitted experience comes to us from a gentleman out of Somerset, Maine, which is in the northern part of Maine, uh, not the coastal part, um, inland Maine. It is probably the northernest most part of the Appalachian Trail. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Appalachian Trail starts up in Maine. Um, gentleman's email was short and sweet. Jeff, I heard you talk about Maine quite a lot and the Adirondacks. I've got some information I'd like to share with you. I am not a writer, but I am a sheriff's deputy, a volunteer fireman, and a volunteer search and rescue. I can tell you that this experience has changed my life. Please reach out. November 19th. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I did. Texted him around 3.30 this afternoon. And uh, I get a response. Um, Holy cow. You know, I didn't think you were going to respond to me. Sorry about your family, your dad, this and that. And uh, I said, hey, are you free? And he said, I'll be free around 630 if that's good for you, sir. 
I said, well, that's perfect for me. I, said, I got nothing else to do with my life except work on the channel. So I do some more work, some more um, email work, emailed some subscribers and such. And uh, 6.30 comes around and literally 6.29 in 51 seconds my phone is ringing and it's Brant and uh, I said hello how are you I'm doing well he said listen I don't want to bore you I got some information I want to share with you uh, where do you want to start <clears throat> I said okay well you know Tell me a little bit about yourself, what, you know. Well, my name is Brant. You can use my real name. Uh, Sheriff's deputy. And I am a volunteer fire department fireman. And also a uh, search and rescue volunteer. I've lived in Maine my entire life, uh, up in Somerset. And the experience that I got to share with you has changed my life. Uh, in the way that I look at the northern woods of Maine, in any woods at that matter. Once you have an encounter, if you've never had one, I hope that you never do. I know that people that, that have not, they say, I can't wait until I have one, until they do. Because even if it's not a violent or whatever experience, uh, it, it does change your life. And um, so he and I start talking and um, this experience took place just south of a little kind of hamlet of Somerset called West Fork um, on the Kennebec River. Now the Kennebec runs kind of almost right down to Augusta, I believe, but it's, it's a fairly long running river through Maine. Um, they had gotten a phone call, the, the search and rescue uh, organization that he works for, had gotten a phone call from this adventure bound rafting corporation, which is right on the Kennebec River. Um, <clears throat> We've got a couple of uh, kayaks that were rented. A um, few young adults were gonna go camping for a night and they haven't been back in two days. There was only gonna be like a, you know, 18 hour trip or whatever, you know, go out in the early afternoon, camp, come back in, early afternoon, no more than 24 hours. So he and another fella, um, being that where it's at, load up their trailer. Um, they attach the boat to trailer to their truck because they know that they're going to have to get into the river um, and at least follow the river down um, to where they may have been and it is pretty dense out there. It's a very rural area uh, Somerset's like 4,000 square miles with a population of like 50,000 um, So it's it's there's a lot of remote Places in there even 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 the towns that are there are remote Um but it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's Northern Maine is, is like the Adirondacks to me. It's God's country. And, uh, so they get, they get down to adventure Brown probably an hour and a half, two hours after they had received the telephone call and, um, they check in, they get the names of the people. And apparently when they rent, uh, rafts or whatever, uh, it's, protocol that they fill out a uh, 
a form stating that adventure bound rafting or whatnot is not liable for any kind of thing that could possibly go wrong with you um that you are now using their equipment but they are not responsible if you drowned if you whatever uh get attacked by a wild turkey and get your eye plucked out um and they take a photo which is really cool because if they didn't do that, these two guys would have gone in there pretty much blind, just looking for a couple random people. So they get all that information and they get together. Uh, Brant and his companion get together. He asked me not to use his name because he doesn't know if he has permission to use his name or not. But um, so they, they get all the information and they kind of set up a plan of attack, you know. They, of course, ask, you know, which way did they go? Did they go up, which would be north up the Kennebec, or did they go south towards, um, towards the ocean, uh, which is a long ways away? Um, the... Adventure Bound or the rafting company didn't really know which way they went. Um, the itinerary wasn't really all that uh, detailed. And so they kind of went with their own gut instinct and said, hey, well, let's go with the flow of the river. So we'll go south following the river down. Um, they end up going down the river and they're traveling. Now, the Appalachia Trail runs kind of along the uh, Kennebec River and it crosses it at one point. <clears throat> and uh, so they're going along. They're, they're just beautiful day they're cruising through um they run into what they see in the distance is like a little campsite set up off the shore of the river um they're like holy you know this is this is quick you know um thinking it's these three people and they shore up introduce themselves of course they are in uh company search and rescue companies logoed shirts and cap and uh they introduce themselves and they say hey you know um we thought you were someone else but have you seen how long have you been here you know have you seen anybody have you touched base with anybody and uh the people that were at the campsite said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, talked to those people yesterday. Um, and they said they were, they were feeling out the water and trying to figure out a, a best location, where to camp, um, where the most remote part would be, but still be in kind of an area where if anything happened, they could get out of there fairly quickly <clears throat> um, and the one guy that was at the camp apparently he's not from Maine but he's hiked this region he's a he's a he's a photographer slash hiker and um, spends a lot of his time up there and on the trail so he said yeah there's a spot just past where you rented your boats um go back up river and it's just by this area called or a town uh called Karatunk or Kartunk um on the opposite side of the river there's some woods there's some trails out there there's a pond 
Uh, you could shore up your kayaks. No one will bother them. Um, and you can hike out to that pond and go camping out there with nobody bothering you. But if you know you were to hurt yourself, you could get get help immediately. Okay, and so thank you, yada yada, and they go back up river. Um, <clears throat> they get to an area where they believe these people shored up. It's kind of across the river from uh, Karatunk, and they shore their boat up, get out, and they start looking around, looking for tracks, and they start to, you know, we should get out to that pond at this time, probably about an hour it'll take us. All right, so if we go out there, laying out the time-wise, um, they decide that if they are at that pond, that they'll let them know, hey, you know, you guys were supposed to be back a day ago. Uh, unless you don't want law enforcement called on you, which would be him. Uh, come back. One of you come back with us. Let the people know, pay for another couple of nights or whatever, and I, I will bring you back. You don't even have to kayak out. So that's their plan of attack. Um, they hike out to this kind of remote pond. Uh, as they're hiking out, they, they do find these um, two kayaks, three people, two kayaks. There's a one-man and a two-man kayak, and they're shored up kind of pushed off to the side in the woods, tipped upside down, so no water or anything will accumulate in there, um, and tied off with some rope to a tree. Not really a theft uh, prevention, but pretty much probably for whatever. I don't know why he said it. <laughs> so they, they end up going to the pond and they start looking around, but they don't see any kind of uh, sign of life. They don't see any kind of fire, um, fire pit that's fairly new, just nothing. And these people uh, did have a tent and <clears throat> a couple backpacks and stuff, which they had gotten from the itinerary from the uh, rafting rental rental place so at this point they are now thinking well we've got about another four four and a half hours of light should we push on because there's in this area there are just little ponds and little systems of water all throughout this region uh it's it's really interesting. It's like upstate New York um, when the glacier moved through. It just carved out land and little ponds and lakes and such were made. There's a couple man-made lakes up there. Um, so they decide, yeah, let's, let's go. We already know they're here. We found their kayaks um, tied up, responsible. Maybe something happened. Maybe, you know, one of them got hurt and they got lost. Can't figure out. Don't want to leave someone behind. Let's let's push on. So they end up hiking out another 45 minutes to a um, pond called Pierce Pond. And there's a campsite on the opposite side of the pond <clears throat> maybe they're there let's go check and see they go into this um pierce campsite cob pierce campsite 
and uh, they end up asking a couple of people, some younger people that are there, because um, these the, the people that they're they're essentially looking for right now are kind of crispies, um, deadheads, I guess you know dreads, probably you know drinking IPs and smoking with reefer. <laughs> uh, so they they see a couple people at this campsite that fit the similarities. Maybe they hooked up with these guys. Maybe these guys know. Hey, how are you? Da 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 da. Did you see these people? And um, so they then um, the one guy kind of says, "Yeah, we saw." whatever his name was um he calls him some like weird kind of deadhead name they said that they were gonna go out to otter pond which is just kind of north east of this pond about a half an hour away um so they end up all right, thank you. Thank you very much. When did you see them? Oh, that was last night. Last night. Okay, well, maybe they, you know, got something, got caught up. They got lost. They got hurt. Um, so they end up hiking out there, and they get to Otter Pond. They can see a pond in the distance, not too far. Now, when I say distance, I don't mean, like, miles away like within which is called north otter pond and north otter pond is a little longer than otter pond so at this point they start to see some like uh tracks bare feet some shoes shoe tracks and such perfect perfect we we've got confirmation that you know someone's been here at least let's look around they bino the area and they look over towards north otter pond and they see this orange tent set up off in the distance um they walk out towards the tent and they see that that first they notice that the campfire is out um but it was constructed someone had they had taken the time to lay stones around and they notice that the tent the back of the tent is kind of messed up they don't realize it until they get right up on the tent that the tent has these large claw marks through the back side of the tent. There's two backpacks still in the tent, a um, couple sets of shoes, and they're like, what the hell? Bear? And now they're looking for blood, but they don't see any blood. Um, next thing, they realize that you know, we got two hours of daylight left. It's about an hour and 15 back to our boat. Uh, we've got flashlights and such, but, you know, what if, what if, you know, something is desperately wrong with these people? What if one of them's dead is pretty much what he said. Um, at that point, they start looking at the ground and looking at where the tracks are. Um, the tracks are scattered. They are not in a single file. They are not kind of, um, side by side. There's just like a set of tracks over here, a set of tracks here and a set of tracks kind of heading back towards um, the woods, which would bring them back to the initial pond that, that they had just come from. And 
so now they know that okay they are separated we've got some sort of animal that attacked the tent did it do it while they were in the tent did it do it after we don't know where these people are now um the only thing that we know for sure is that they had taken time enough time to set up a decent campsite uh with like the the rocks around their fire um and a perimeter you know they cleaned their perimeter and you know so they were fairly responsible so at this point um brent's like brant's like we've got to find these people you know it's not like they're drug addled idiots that are going to set the forest on fire look at you know what they did they're fairly responsible um how about you follow the set of tracks that go one way and i'll follow the set of tracks that go the other way okay okay uh he starts walking the other guy starts walking in the other direction and Brant walks probably almost about a half a mile in and he can hear talking so he hears this kind of whispering but not really low whispering and he yells out their names and he, he announces himself hey you know this is brant i am this person i here to you know help you get out of here i work with search and rescue uh we were sent out here by the rafting company um and he notices this kind of like rocky outcropping with um a small smallish couple of caves cave mouths and he's looking and he's like there's no way all three people are in there um but that's where i i'm getting the sense that they're there because i can hear something and i swear to god someone responded so he gets up in there and he's he looks and he said oh it's a little larger than i initially thought and he said hello you know and he hears this girl's voice say something and they come kind of crawling out of this mouth of this little cave um and he says you know hey uh, how are you are you okay uh, we found your campsite um we were sent here to locate you you know uh the people that you rented your kayaks from are kind of upset and worried about you all in the same sense um let's get you out of here are you okay is anyone hurt why haven't you been back what's wrong with your tent and uh the guy that's with the there's two girls one guy and uh the guy that's comes out last out of the cave ends up saying you know we were we were in our tent last night and or two nights ago and um we heard this breathing at first we thought you know maybe it was a deer because it was off in the distance then i thought maybe it was a moose so i told the girls to be quiet and you know let's hear if we hear any uh heavy vibrational footsteps because if it is a moose we're gonna have to figure out some place to get to where this thing can't get us so more than likely we're gonna have to climb a tree and they they wait but they do they end up hearing this kind of heavy vibrational steps 
And but they realize like, okay, this isn't it doesn't sound like a quadruped. It doesn't sound like a horse would. Um it sounds like a large a large human. And at that point the tent kind of just gets crunched down and ripped open and they turn and look and they're all they see is this muzzle because they have one of those kind of lantern lights that take batteries hanging in the top of the tent so when they they turn and they see this muzzle coming into the tent and they take off running and that's where the kind of crazy footprints are this thing is then in its in their tent um because as they went out of the tent instead of backing out like a a a person would it pushed itself into the tent so now it's kind of stuck in the tent for a couple of minutes or a minute or so you know it's trying to get out of the tent so they end up getting back together and running until they find this outcropping and they crawl into the cave system. And he said, well, you know, all right, we didn't see anything like this. We didn't see any footprints either. We saw your footprints, but we, I didn't see any kind of paw prints or hoof prints or kind of anything. So now he's thinking, okay, maybe these guys are on drugs. Maybe they, they took some DMT or some acid or something. Maybe they're having a hallucinogenic trip. Um, how long have you been in the tent or in that cave exactly? We don't know. We don't know. We lost track of time. I don't have a watch on. We've been in there for a long time. We're starving. We're thirsty. Um a night has passed but they're you know they're in they're in shock and terror at the same sense uh so he's like all right we now brent's like thinking these guys are just not bad people but i'm not you know i don't want to really want to use the words he used um but kind of like stoners you know, and he's a little perturbed being that he's a sheriff's deputy and, you know, these guys now owe this company money. They had to come out and look. So they end up, all right, let's, let's get back to your tent, grab your packs, grab your shoes. I've got some water, pulls out some water for him. Let's get you to the boat. We'll put the kayaks on our boat and we'll get out of here. All right. Thank you. Yada, yada. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, They go in. They walk. He ends up meeting the other search and rescue guy. And they get everything squared away. And they put the kayaks onto their boat, fasten them down. Because they don't have a huge boat. Now, there's, you know, when it's two people, it's pretty comfy, you know. Now you got five and three or two kayaks. You got three people, three extra people and two kayaks. So you, you're, you took a lot of room. Um, as they're loading everything up, they're like, well, shit, now it's dark almost. So as... They are loading everything up. He's talking to his his partner um, from the search and rescue, kind of filling him in. Hey, you know, uh, I think these guys, you know, are drugged up. I think they did some acid or possibly some sort of hallucinogenic uh, drugs. But then he starts to, as he's talking to his teammate, he starts to think, well, if they took drugs, that wouldn't have caused the tent's damage. You know, it was this tent was pushed 
crunched down and torn apart, like torn open in the back where, where this dog man had run into the tent instead of like a human, like if it was a serial killer or something, they'd cut the tent open, the people would come out running, and he'd wait, and he'd get them. This thing kind of just pushed in as they were running out of the tent. So now he's kind of like, all right, this is this is weird. Um, talking to his teammate, making sure everybody's okay, kind of giving him a once-over. Um because irregardless of what his view of these people are, he still has a uh, a duty to them, a civic duty to you know keep them safe, make sure they are uh, not hurt, and so they've got about a half an hour kind of cruise down the river to get back to where their truck is parked where these people rented the kayaks from and <clears throat> they're still sitting there talking um the boat has a light on the front kind of like a spotlight so they, they know they're gonna be okay but he's kind of trying to feel everything out um they ended up did they took the packs they took the tent they didn't leave any kind of uh debris or garbage back there you know they they brought in what they took in or brought out what they took in um so he's looking at the tent and he's looking up at his buddy and he's like check this out you know um these marks don't look like a knife like this. it's huge these are huge and whatever kind of ripped instead of like where a knife would slash this is just like a rip uh, his teammate at that point is now on edge and he can tell that he's on edge people are in the boat <clears throat> they're talking amongst themselves and he's like I don't know if I should call you know a couple deputies to meet me meet us down there and figure out what exactly you know if these people are are drugged up and they think something like this really happened. Maybe they're on, you know, some really heavy drugs. Maybe they have some with them. I don't know. You know, they don't, he doesn't know them. He maybe should run their IDs and shit. Uh, he's talking to his partner and he notices his partner's kind of like got this look of WTF am I looking at Brant's like what and he turns and it's about a little after dusk so you've got the sky is kind of that purplish pink with gray you know it's it's dark um, but there is still some light and but back towards where the camp was where they just got these people out of that the sky isn't pink and purplish over that way it's dark there and he's like what are you looking at and he turns and he looks and he sees these kind of two red dots he's like what the hell is that and he's like, I don't know what that is. They, you know, they're, and they stand there kind of fascinated for a second. But they notice that whatever it is, the dots are growing in size. And his partner goes, We need to get the hell out of here. Whatever that is, it's coming towards us. Um, so they push the boat into the water and they start it up. And they start heading back down, but they're watching these two dots come up. Bam, now it's smack at the riverbed. And they are downstream, but they can still see about whatever feet away. And they're, they're trying to make out the silhouette 
of what they're seeing. It's obviously humanoid, but it's freaking huge with red eyes. And they hear this splash. Um, they, everybody's quiet at that point because by by now, the people in the boat that they rescued have now caught wind of what the hell they're looking at. The girl starts freaking out like, oh my God, it found us. It found us. That's what it was. It found us. Um, the other girl's like, go, go. You know, they're, they're screaming like, just get us out of here. You know, we, we were safe where we were. Get us out of here. Uh, they, they keep going down the river and Brant grabs his flashlight out of his pack and he's looking around off in the distance in the river. And what he sees is he sees this these eyes. They're now submerged like this. And uh, he tells the, the people, the guy and the two girls, he said, get down. And he kind of spins the spotlight and turns it on. And what he sees is this dog man is flopping through the water. He said, Jeff, you know, I've heard stories of these creatures climbing trees, uh, and they are very efficient at climbing trees. They are very agile on flat ground, on, you know, rough terrain. But I've never heard of these things swimming. He said, and, you know, he made a joke, and it wasn't doing the doggy paddle. He said, it, if you've ever seen or how you would imagine a mermaid to swim, that it was propelling itself with its back legs and essentially steering with its hands but pushing away the water so it's 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 literally coming up on them um he yells to his partner you know give it some gas it's 30 40 feet from us give it some gas what the hell is that the partner's got the motor thing and he's looking like what the what the fuck is in the water? What is that thing? And um, they, he doesn't have his firearm on him. Uh, he didn't bring it because he thought, you know, he didn't know who he was dealing with. He knows that he got a call. He thought, you know, a couple kids, no reason to bring a firearm. In and out, done. And they get past this area. Uh, where the lights are on from the town and they start to get a little faster because the water's a little deeper now. <clears throat> and they still see it. But now it's actually picking up speed and it's a roughly 20 feet from their boat and swimming very like an Olympic swimmer quick just um and then it just falls back he said when it fell back so it was swimming and it just you know pushed back like that uh i'll try to do it we were we used zoom to talk after so he could show me a couple of he said i want to show you some things to to really demonstrate how it how it looked so when it was swimming it was down but when this creature either got tired of chasing him or it knew it wasn't going to catch them so it's in the water flat like this and then the water the depth of the river there is too deep for it to have touched ground. 
So it's swimming and then it just like literally pushes back with its arms and kind of floats there for a second. And you can see, you can see its upper body. You can see its face, its head. Um, he said it had very sporadic hairs all over what he could see in the water. And he's got his spotlight on it. And his partner is, they're both looking at this thing. Um, it's, it's fur on its head seemed to be a lot thicker than its sporadic hair, like past its shoulders down from what he could see. He couldn't see below a certain point, maybe like right here. And, but he said what caught him off guard is when he's looking at this thing, he distinctly saw two nipples where, you know, male, male breasts would be or, you know, fem but it didn't have female breasts. It had nipples. That's how sparsely its hair was on its chest. Um, so when it, it did that, he's watching it and he, that that's what stuck in his mind was the nipples. He said, I, I don't know why he said, maybe because maybe because I'm freaky like that, but the nipples really popped out at me. Um, and I said, yeah, well maybe because you saw the hair of this creature, but then you saw something very human-like other than the way it came up to the shore and then, you know, standing bipedally, but then was swimming like this, but it's back end, you know, like that. Uh, maybe that was the one human characteristic that popped out at you. And that's why you kind of, you've kept that uh, with you for so long. So they do end up getting to <clears throat> the uh, rafting area where their truck is. That dog man, like I said, stopped and kind of just peered up at him. And, you know, it was. It was a very human-like thing, the way it moved. Because prior to everything that he was seeing, he, he was seeing this thing running He's hearing what these people are saying about it. But then he sees it methodically move through the water. Um, they get to the uh, adventure bound area. They shore up, back the truck up, get everything set. And he says, listen, you know, um, <laughs> right now I... I'm going to go in and I'm going to tell these people that you guys were lost. Um, that's why we're so late coming back. I'm going to tell them that, you know, they're, they, they shouldn't file any charges that you were not trying to steal anything. Um, I don't think it'd be in anyone's, in anyone's, uh, best bet to say, a word about what happened out there today um, or, you know, the last couple of days for you guys. Um, so, you know, I'm going to go in with you if they want their money for the couple of, you know, for the day at, that you missed because you already paid them for the one day. But if they want that other day, pay them and, you know, go home. And they agree. Uh, he said, I'm going to keep your tent. They, he brought the tent. He, they had all their gear. You know, they like what they brought in, they brought out because they weren't getting chased at that time. He said, I want to look at your, you know, I want to figure out what the hell that thing was. So I'm keeping your tent. Um, but you're, you guys are free to go. 
as far as I'm concerned. And him and his buddy, they talk about it. Same conclusion. Let's not tell anybody about what the hell we just saw. But I'm not going... I'm, I'm not going out in the woods by myself anymore, you know. <laughs> um, on any more search and rescue missions, I probably won't go out. He ended up, the his friend ended up not being in the search and rescue team anymore. He uh, decided, hey, you know, I don't want, I don't want any more part of whatever's out there. Uh, Brant is still volunteer fire department search and rescue and deputy um after all of that went down about six months seven months spring of next year he gets a call um, as being one of the few deputies that are up in that region because like I said it is remote and that there's uh, something dead on the side of the uh, side of the Kennebec River and he decides okay um, you know let me go up and check it out now as he's going through the area he realizes that wow this is only you know eighth of a mile away from where that experience occurred seven six months ago six seven months ago and um He gets there and he he sees what it is. He's like, "Oh, okay, all right, good." You know, it's a it's a, a moose. Probably fell, broke its leg, and drowned in the water. All right, all right. So he gets out, and of course, you can't leave it in the water to pollute the river nor can you leave it so he calls fish and game and as he's he's like all right i gotta get this thing out of here uh let me try and get it up off the out of the water so much you know i'm not going to be able to because this thing probably outweighs me by 150 pounds maybe two because moose are big but it's not a full-grown moose it's still a uh, juvenile moose, but it's still bigger than he is, a lot bigger. So when he gets down there and he he doesn't see anything, he doesn't notice anything off right at, right away. But when he starts to pull on the animal to get it back, it moves, and he falls back, and he's like, "What the hell?" And he's like, thinking, "I'm not that strong." <laughs> And he sees that, he sees the blood kind of roll into the water. And what he, when he looks, he sees that the stomach of this moose has been ripped open. And a lot of soft tissue and inner organs are gone. And he's like, holy shit. And he immediately thinks back to that night. It was this creature that did it. Because this is not a bear. A bear would not have done this. Uh, Fish and game show up. He says, yeah, I just pulled it out. Um, It looks like a bear attack to me, he says to the fish and game guy. And fish and game guy is like, looks at it. They kind of roll it over a little so he can look at it more. And he could tell, Brant could tell that something was wrong by the guy's face because he just, the way he looked at it was like, what the hell, it's not a bear? What is that? What what did this? 
And he said, yep, yep, that's bear. As he's saying, yep, yep, that's a bear attack, his eyes and facial expression are saying something totally different. And they end up taking care of the carcass. And since that time, he said that uh, a few people out in Forks have claimed to have seen something run through their property. But other than that, there's been no attacks on animal, you know, like someone's dog, a random hiker. So this thing's obviously feeding on the wildlife that's in the area, which is abundant. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go. And honestly, what makes it special is truly appreciated. Brant, thank you for reaching out and sharing this with us. I apologize for being so late and, and getting in touch with you. Um, but yeah, I think the reason why the one big thing that sticks in his head is how it was swimming, but cutting the water with its front hand slash paws. And then when it realized, like, I'm not going to catch this boat, these guys are gone, it just... And that water's too deep for it to stand there. So it literally... it. These creatures are, are more adapted to living in the wild than we ever could imagine. You know, they're so intelligent. Like, a human swimmer that, that, that practices swimming would know that kind of motion to kind of just slow down and tread water. Uh, but that's not something like your everyday swimmer is going to do. But this dog man did it. So real strange. All right, guys, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. Keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about. And it may just save their life someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.